In today's video, I need your help. I'm working on a deal and I want you to work it with me. My goal is to make this channel the best place for new investors to get high quality, in-depth, free content, and in order to make that happen, I want to try something a little bit differently. Many channels might break down their deals or run numbers on example deals, but today I wanna to try something new. I'll share all the details that I know about this deal, where I found it, the things that I know about it, what I think the ARV is, what I think the rehab budget is, what the real estate agent has told me, everything. I'll tell you what I'm offering the seller and in the comments you can share your thoughts as well. Then in a few days I'll make a follow up video sharing all of the details and all of the results. What did the seller say? How did the negotiation go? How do I manage this deal when there's a real estate agent involved? And of course, do I think I can make money on this? So if you're down for that and you appreciate this opportunity to learn and experience this deal right along with me, the best way to let me know is to change the color of the like button. It tells me and YouTube that you think this is a high quality video and that causes the mighty YouTube algorithm to show it to more people and to help our community grow. So I really appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button and let's get started. So to bring you up to speed, this is an on-market distressed listing, which means it's posted on a site like Redfin or Zillow and because it says as is, it tells me that this property either has some repair that is needed or it's just really outdated and the seller doesn't want to make any of the updates. When I first came across this property the other day, I actually sent out a quick email to all of the members of my mentorship program and I had them hop on a live Zoom call with me so that they could see me analyze the deal and call the real estate agent in real time. I recorded that Zoom call and I'll play some of it a little bit later on in this video, but the idea of bringing people along while I'm doing a deal and just seeing the ins and outs of what happens every step of the way is something that my mentorship students found really valuable and I figured YouTube would as well. If you'd like to be a part of that mentorship program and do things like this with me every single week, I'll leave a link with all of the information you'll need in the description below. So here are the pictures of the listing and right away we can kind of see that it's just a bit outdated. We've got kind of some not so great colored paint, we've got popcorn ceilings, um, coming into the bathroom, we've got some wallpaper that's gotta go. Same thing with this kitchen, wallpaper has to go. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, this property definitely needs a cosmetic revamping. Um, but I didn't see anything too extreme for what's going on with this property. Also, when we come and look at the listing, all we can see up front is that it says fabulous neighborhood, easy access to the highway, new hot water tank, new HVAC, great backyard, blah, 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 blah. And it just says sold as is, no repairs. So that doesn't tell me are there actual repairs that are needed or is this just a property that is really outdated and the seller doesn't wanna do any updating? So this is where I picked up the phone, called the real estate agent, and just asked her what was going on with the property. I hadn't started recording just yet because I didn't know if this was gonna be a deal, but if you wanna see an example of what this first phone call to a real estate agent might sound like, you can check out this video right here. Now, when I called the listing agent on this property, she told me, yes, there's the cosmetic updates that the seller doesn't want to make, but also there are some pretty intense foundations issues. This house sits on a slab concrete foundation and the entire backside of that foundation has cracked and the concrete is starting to slip into the ground, which means that in the house you can see areas where walls are separating, the flooring is separating, and just feel big cracks as you're walking around. I learned back in this video that oftentimes when this happens with a concrete slab, it's because there's a plumbing leak underneath the house and all of the leaking water causes the dirt under the house to kind of erode, which means the concrete starts to slip and eventually cracks and that's where you get these big issues. We'll get into how we're gonna estimate the rehab budget for this and all of that a little bit later in this video. At first glance, you might be thinking, oh my goodness, foundation issues run. But in actuality, I thought this was a really good thing and for two reasons. The first reason is that the typical person who's going to buy a house isn't walking in with cash to purchase it. They're going to get a home loan from a bank so they can use an FHA loan, a VA loan, a conventional loan, whatever. But all of those types of loans are going to require that a house to be in reasonably good condition. That doesn't mean like the wallpaper and the ugly bathroom and stuff, but it does mean those loans would require the seller to fix the foundation issues before the house could be purchased. And in this case, 
case the seller wants the house to sell as is no repairs and so they're not willing to fix those foundation issues which means the house can pretty much only sell to investors who can come in with cash and fix it and that means that there's a smaller pool of competition not thinking about all the people who might have wanted to purchase this house with a traditional bank loan the second reason I was excited about this property is because I know it's outdated in terms of the cosmetics but there are a lot of people who would like to go into a house like this buy it with a bank loan and just kind of spruce it up and, and do a DIY themselves. And so I was thinking if I purchased this property and fix the foundation damage myself, then I might be able to put it back on the market with the same cosmetics, sell it to someone who wants to be a DIYer, kind of a handyman and fix it up themselves. So that might be an interesting first flip. So to start it all off, the first thing we need to know about this property is what is the ARV or the after repair value, AKA if this property was fixed up, how much could it sell? for. What I have right here is a Redfin screen open where I drew around this neighborhood and I'm looking at the last six months of homes sold. And the first thing I see is that the most expensive house in this area does not have any pictures and although it's expensive in the sense that it sold for $245,000 it only sold for $68 a square foot which tells me that this was like you can see here a really big property that probably wasn't in the greatest condition then from there I see this one that sold for $203,000 1890 square feet and sold for $107 a square foot and when I open up that property Reading the description, I can see that this is one that has recently been updated and remodeled, so it's a good one to get an idea of what my ARV might be. Taking a quick look through the pictures, we can see that they've obviously redone the bathroom, looks like fresh carpet, fresh paint, sprucing things up. We've got a nice kitchen here. So imagine that my property was gonna be fixed up in similar condition, maybe it could sell for something similar to this. Looking at the specifications, this is a three bedroom, two bathroom, 1890 square feet. And our property is a three bedroom, two bathroom, 1433 square feet. And so the way that I look at this is, yes, it's another three bedroom, two bathroom close by that sold for a lot and was updated, but it's also 400 square feet bigger. So I need to take that into account. So going back to our list, We've got this one right here that we know is a flip, but it's a little bit bigger. That sold for $107 a square foot. And then we've got all of these properties down here that are just typical owner-occupied houses. These are not houses that have been flipped. They're just nice, but like somebody was living here. And so it's not the greatest comparison, but it's still pretty good. And looking at all of these houses, we can see that they sold in the 189, 173, 170, 163, but they're all still a little bit bigger than ours, which is in the 1400 square foot range. So this is where you have to make a judgment call. Looking at what has sold in the past six months, we've got one flip that sold for 203, and then we're looking between really like 160 and 190 based on how nice the property is. So one thing that I like to do when I'm making this decision is to actually sort instead of by price, but by price per square foot. And I can see that the property that was flipped sold for 107, and then we've got some of our other ones that sold for 106, 100, and into the 99s. And of course, these properties are all bigger than ours, they're different sizes, but we can think about okay if our property sold for let's call it somewhere between 100 and 107 dollars per square foot where would that put our sale price and we can look at that using the wholesaling deal calculator this is a calculator that my brother helped me build to run my numbers more quickly and as i talked about that mentorship program earlier members of that program get this so if you're interested in it you can check the link below but let's kind of walk through how we can utilize this so if we know that our property maybe could sell for somewhere between 100 and 107 dollars a square foot that's what we put here in our arv price per square foot so let's call it 105 dollars and the size of our property is 1433 square feet so we put that in right there and we're only changing the numbers in blue and the calculator does some math for us and tells us that our arv if we sold for 105 dollars a square foot will be somewhere around 150 thousand dollars and so what we have to think about here is these properties that sold for like this one 163 it's relatively updated, but it's not like a fresh flip. So part of us might feel like, well, this sold for 163. If my property was nicely updated, brand new, 
it could probably sell for more. But then the other side of us should be saying, well, our property is 200 square feet smaller, so it makes sense that it might sell for a little bit less. So that's kind of the game that you have to play and think about what could this property actually sell for. Here's what I'm thinking. If this property sold for $110 a square foot, that would put it at $157,000 for the ARV. And I actually think that this property would fall right in between our top two sales. So this one, which is freshly updated, is also bigger. And so it makes sense, I think that will be the top, right? We're not gonna sell for more than this one. But I do think, comparing it to something like this, which is not freshly updated, and is of similar size, only 100 or so square feet bigger, we could sell for a little more than this. So that's why I'm thinking that our ARV is actually gonna be somewhere around 170 to 180. And we can put that into the deal calculator just by playing around with the price per square foot. So I think I'm gonna put this right at 120, okay? What do you guys think of that? Do you think this property based on what we're seeing in terms of the last six months of sales, could sell for 170, is it more than that, is it less? Let me know in the comments. Next up, after we've got our ARV, we need to think about the rehab budget. And the great thing about this property is that when I reached out to the real estate agent, she let me know that a structural inspection had already been done and a quote to repair the structural damage had already been done as well. So in this case, it's awesome that the homeowner already got the structural quote for us. And the way that I like to address this is thinking about what is everything else that needs to be updated in terms of the cosmetics of the property and then add in that structural quote. And so, what I'm seeing in terms of the pictures of the property is that this is a basic cosmetic rehab, which on my deal calculator puts this at just a medium, run of the mill, new paint, new flooring, new updated kitchen and bathrooms, and that's pretty much it. So if that was the only thing that needed to be done, this deal would probably run us around thirty to $35,000 as our rehab estimate, but we've also got to think about the $25,000 that goes towards the foundation issues. So this jumps up to a 60K rehab, and we come over here to our important numbers. We've got 171 as our ARV, 60 grand as our rehab budget, and if we wanna make a 10K wholesale fee, that tells us that our offer price needs to be right around $66,000 if we're using the 80% rule. Now, in your market, Investors might be using anywhere from 70 to 85%. Typically, the hotter the market, the higher that number goes. And so have conversations in your local Facebook groups, have conversations with your cash buyers, and figure out what number they're using in your market. In my market, I know that most buyers are comfortable buying at this 80%. And so that would tell me to offer a maximum to the seller of about 66 grand, and then try to get my cash buyers purchasing for about 76 grand. Now, Looking at the listing, this property is actually listed for 124,000. So our offer would be coming in way lower than what the seller is expecting. And that gave me some pause. because I'm like, they're gonna be offended. They're gonna be mad. They're automatically gonna reject it. So what I did was I called the real estate agent and kind of hinted at where my offer might be coming in, hoping that she would give me a little bit more information. And I'll play that Zoom call that I did live with my mentorship students for you guys right now. I called the relationship, like, do you think they would take 115 for it? So I already know that we have people that are you know, out there that are wanting to do like 110, 115. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, so based on that information, I know that he wouldn't like go down to 75. Yeah. Let me, let me do this. Let's, let's put it on paper. Let's put an offer for 90 cash, quick okay. close. We'll pay closing costs. Let's put that on paper um, okay. and see how they feel about that. And then, okay. um, you know, that that's at least a solid offer and, and not just, you know, I'm, I might submit. So I'll email you that right, now okay. and then you can let okay. me know what he says and it'll start a discussion. Okay, that'd be awesome. Alrighty, I appreciate it. Talk soon. All right, All right thanks. Bye-bye. What do you guys think? I decided to go ahead and put the offer in for $90,000. Now, my deal calculator was telling me 70 grand. The property is listed at 124, and the agent says there might be some offers coming in for about 100 to 110. Now, I do take that with a grain of salt because anyone can say they're gonna offer, but when it's on paper and when it's legit, that's when it matters. My thought process here is that there are a couple of different options. The first option is I could actually purchase this property myself with a combination of cash and a 
hard money loan, fix up just the foundation issues for the 25 grand, and then turn around and put it right back on the market immediately for someone else to buy and finish out the renovation. That's option one. Option two is that I could partner with one of my cash buyers and go in on the fix and flip with them. That would mean that I would only have to come up with half of the money and while I would take half of the profit, I would also take half of the risk and I would be learning alongside them. That could be a really good situation for my first flip. And then option three is that I could just wholesale this deal. Now, I do think it's possible that we're underestimating that ARV a little bit. We've got a flip right around the corner that sold for 200,000. Although it's a little bit bigger, maybe ours could sell for closer to that. Maybe we can get up into that 180, 185 range and that would mean that our offer price could actually stand to be a little bit higher. It's also a very hot market right now and so buyers are looking for deals and they're buying them for more and more. So it's possible that even though the 80% rule tells me to offer 70 grand, my 90 grand might be okay. So that's where my head's at. What do you guys think? I wanna know your thoughts in the comment section below and make sure you turn on notifications because in a few days I'll be posting an update video of everything that happens with this deal and what the seller thinks of my 90 grand offer even though they're asking for 124 grand. I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments and until next time, thanks for watching.